Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kevin Tomlinson, and welcome to my kitchen. And we're going to, it's a very special program today. We have a wonderful guest who's going to be joining me live. Um, it's Felicia Boyd Bazaar. So we're waiting for people to come inside the room. And so listen, it's um, a very special time. And my hashtag is let's rebuild the family table. I'm very excited about this because, you know, I was watching The Crown today. The Crown um, is a Netflix movie that's on talking about the life of Queen Elizabeth. And I got so excited about The Crown. Um, I don't know, just watching it, you know, it's teaching me a whole lot. But something she said today uh, on an episode when her husband was about to go on a five-month journey. She wrote a lovely little note and placed it in this briefcase and said, remember, you have family. And so I was like, wow, that's powerful. It's a simple little note, but it meant so much. No matter where he went, all around, uh, all around the world on that tour by himself, she reminded him that he had family. Today, I am going to be cooking my, normally my Saturday meal that I normally do. Um, today I'm going to be doing some down-home food. I felt like eating some down-home food, so I'm going to be doing some conkin rice with some, with a baked chicken and some potato salad. All right, so I'm very excited about that. So let me introduce, first of all, um, our guest, Miss Felicia Boyd, Boyd, Boyle Bazaar. Listen, she comes with a weight of credentials. Um, this is the big leagues now. She has been in the financial service uh, area for about 15 years. She has a master's degree in administration with a focus on finance. She's a CPA. She's a certified public accountant. And she's licensed with the Bahamas Institution of Chartered Accountants. And she is presently the director um, of Executive Business Solutions. And let me point out, she is married to my good friend, Dr. Ken Bazaar. She's married. She's been married for 14 years. 14 years. When you see her, you're like, wow. And she has two lovely kids. So it's a real joy. Oh, and I, I have to mention this part. She is a fitness fanatic. All right. So now I guess she's trying to catch me up. Anyway, that's joking. But let's welcome her. Um, Felicia, are you there? Hi, Kevin. Hi. How are you, Morgan? Welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining me while I'm cooking my uh, my Sunday meal. I like to cook around this time simply because, you know, normally um, without the lockdown, I'm on the organ in, in church on Sundays from 6 a.m. in the morning, 6.30 a.m. in the morning, and I don't leave church until 1 p.m. Then I have to get back up to 6 p.m. To go wow. to church, so I don't have no time in the middle to cook. So I got into this habit of cooking during this time on Saturday. So I said, you know what? Let's have a conversation while I'm cooking. You know, it, it beats being alone in the kitchen. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and um, um, you know, we go we go back some, and you're from the Great Salem Baptist Church. Um, um, and. The lovely Miss Patricia Bazaar, that is your mother-in-law. May she rest in peace. A great woman and a great pillar in Bahamian culture. A woman who I respect and admire daily. And so you come from some good stock and good good people. So I'm happy to have you on board. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I know I listed some things, but while I get prepared, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you very much, Kevin. And thank you again for having me. No uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm not one to like to speak about myself, but um, basically the first thing I always say is, yes, I have these credentials, et cetera, et cetera, but I'm first and foremost a child of God, and yes. that is um, the highest priority on my list. Uh, wow. Secondly, I am a wife and I am a mommy, and I love those two hats very much. Um, because, you know, and, and one of the reasons I agreed to come on uh, your show is because I truly believe that we need to get back to the table. Um, I you know, uh, a few months back, I, I 
made it mandatory, um, well, with my husband's blessing, that we would uh, do at least Sunday dinners. So Sunday dinners, we would invite um, his dad over, some other family members, and we would have Sunday dinners uh, together. Um, because, you know, during the week, it's hustle, bustle, early mornings, late evenings. Right. Uh, so at least one day of the week, we'll sit down and, and, and catch up, uh, see where we are for the weekend. And so I really buy on to your message. And um, right. yeah, looking forward to a great chat. With no cell phones, right? Just on the family table and just talking. Well, um, we're not there. <laughs> <laughs> Honesty is is good. Um, we're not there yet. We still have the cell phones here and there. We're we're gonna yeah. we're gonna get there. But that's awesome, though. That's awesome. And so what I did, um, Felicia, is what I, I created some topics that I think in this, especially in this time now, that we can help some people to start to readjust their thinking. You know, this pandemic has ushered in a new norm, a yeah. new a new norm for everybody globally. And yeah. it's, I think it's important for us to begin to start to think um, you know, I read this wonderful book by Miss um, Pinder. Um, she, the book was called Readjusting Your Mind. And I think it's so powerful. I'm going to talk about it later on. But it is such a powerful book. She's actually the administrator now in Bimini. Oh, really? And is a, yeah. And, and she is the one who created this book that talks to simply about learning how to budget, how to, how to organize yourself financially. It's a simple read. And something that had a tremendous effect on me, and okay. so, um, so I, um, I like your your idea where you talked about a new financial beginning. So let's start. Teach sure. us how to have a new financial beginning. Well, well, Kevin, you see, right now we're all at ground zero. Uh, uh -huh. We have we're regardless of your financial status, uh, your economic background. We are at ground zero, so to speak. We're all dealing with the pandemic. Uh, we're all impacted some shape, form. Um, so now it is a great time to use this pandemic, use COVID-19 as our starting point. How, right. how do we start? You know, uh, I think I like to think of it as, uh, first, first things first, we need to, you know, going back to the whole AA meeting um, concept. Right. Before you get help, you need to admit that you're an alcoholic. <laughs> Basic. Absolutely. If, if you don't admit that you need financial help or mm -hmm. um, come down from your high horses, then right. chances are you wouldn't get the help that you really need. Right. So, so you're saying honesty. Start with being yeah. honest. Let's do let's do an honest self evaluation um, of our families. Where do we stand financially? Um, the rub right. the rubber has just reached the road, and um, we need to say, you know, where do we stand? How do we? How do we stand? What are the things that that um, affect us financially um, in terms of, you know, our assets? What mm -hmm. assets do you own? And, and you would ask, you know, what are assets? Assets are anything that um, you you can place a value to and that it's it's considered yours. So what are your assets realistically? Yeah. And, and the other thing you would also ask yourself is, you know, what are my liabilities? What are the things that I owe? Who do I owe? And how mm -hmm. much do I owe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you with me so far? I'm with you. Absolutely. And um, right after that, you would ask yourself, how much income do I really earn on a monthly basis? Uh, mm -hmm. And what are the various streams of my income? Is it one stream, two streams, multiple streams of income? Um, no stream at all during this time. And, and, you know, the good thing about this new beginning is that whether you have one dollar 
in the bank account or you have multiple millions of dollars, you still no. need to manage. One day, Laura. Go ahead. <laughs> you still need to manage. Um, uh -huh. You know, so we that is that is key. Uh, you know, we can we can sit and say uh, one, two, three, four, five, all these beautiful things, but the fact remains. Where do we stand financially now that you know, the rubber has met the road? You know what you say in that, right? And you use the word manage. I listened to a sermon by Dr. Miles Monroe one night that left yeah. me feeling so bad. I couldn't sleep. And he made this one statement. He said, you know, whatever you mismanage, you lose. Yeah. Whatever, that's the principle. Whatever you mismanage, you lose. Not just financially, relationship things or whatever, whatever you mismanage. And that statement, like, was a bitter pill to swallow because right away it shows up like areas that, and I mean, it's not to be taken in a negative way, we take it in a way right. to, to build you, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, and, and, and you know, the thing about it, Kevin, is that even before we get into our assets and liabilities, um, we, cannot, we cannot continue the way that we have done business in the past. Uh, we have managed our finances in the past. We have to understand what our um, strongholds are, what our bad habits are, and try to put them in check, try to muzzle them. Um, I'll tell you, I'll start it off and, and maybe um, everybody on the live can, can be honest in this area. What are your shortcomings when it comes to finances? What are the things mm -hmm. that you need to look at? And, and the things that I need to look at, uh, I get really impatient when it comes to waiting out the time that I set for a particular budget item. And a lot of times I try, I find myself trying to make the shoe fit, pushing the, the shoe one. in it, it's even though I do better. Sorry? You're not the only one. I'm very impatient. Like, you know, and I, I realize that about myself. You know what I mean? Like, um, um, you set a goal and then it's like the process to get to it could be a bit draining. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so rather than waiting it out, which is the, 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 best financial advice you can get uh wait it out find other means of increasing your income so that the wait time wouldn't be that long but what i do sometimes is that i make it work there and because i think i know how to juggle things i um right. end up doing a whole lot of squeezing and pushing and, and cutting and pasting and that's that is something that i said during this covid time that you know felicia you need to curb that so if if for example you're looking at changing one of your appliances and you budget it out for the next three four months uh, if it's a big appliance don't try to use a credit card to get that appliance now because you want it now and say to yourself you know what I am going to, that same money that I'm putting to the budget, I'm going to pay off the credit card over time. You know, that is, that is not the best. So that is what I need to look at. What are your, um, what are the things that you need to look at, Kevin? And I, I want you to be honest now. Uh, apart yeah. from making the shoe fit, what other bad financial habits you have? Yeah, <laughs> um, a lot. But anyway, I'm working on them. But, um, one of the things I realized, though, you know, there was a time when I realized I spent $400 in one month on eating out. Eating yeah. out. I was like, what? Now, people see me cooking now, right? And showing a lot of food and so forth online. And it's been happening for a couple of months. And it's because I realized how much money I was losing just by buying food out. Yeah. And yeah. I said, this is crazy. And... Go into the food store. I can spend fifty dollars um, grocery because it's just me. And right. I was like, you know, um, I can spend about fifty dollars on grocery, and I can have sufficient food to hold me for almost two weeks. Now I looked at the math. I looked at the math, and I said, "Now wait a minute. This don't make sense. 
that don't make sense. Me spending all that money on fast food and then I can be cooking and, and, and then learning how to cook for myself. Right. You know? And I'm right. so glad I practiced, began practicing when I did. Because listen to girl, if I didn't learn how to cook up to this point, during this quarantine time, I would, dog would eat my lunch. Especially <laughs> the lockdown. And, I know. and that's the thing. We should be, we should take this concept from the lockdown and apply it when we get out to the new normal, you know. Um, right. One of the things that we need to cook uh, the the pre-planned meals because not only will it help your budget, it will also help your fitness level. Um, you know, uh, it will help your weight. I'm back. I've started to lose. I lost fifteen pounds in this quarantine. What? Fifteen pounds. I feel good about that. So that's awesome. You are awesome. right about that. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, I mean, you, you should take the family out to eat as a treat. Um, but make it make it for uh, you know a monthly treat uh, if if your budget permits then a weekly treat um, but not a daily treat it, it it definitely will not do well on your budget and it will not do well on your body uh, if you are especially intaking um, fast foods and and all those things. What what killed me is when I'm driving and I pass KFC. No offense to all these brands, mind you. KFC and Burger King and Wendy's, the line is so long every day. Yeah. And I'm like, boy, look here. I, I, I'm not, I can't afford to live like them. But I was like, wow, you know, but that was my biggest thing, spending a lot of money on eating out. And um, um, I realized that, you know, especially as an entrepreneur, you can't be living like that. <laughs> you, you add, especially when you're in business for yourself, you have to actually really be tight, you know, with everything. And, you know, someone said to me the other day, I cheat. I said, no, I'm, I'm not cheap. I have to start, I have to practice that frugality, you know, try to be as frugal as possible so everything can remain balanced. Because if one thing ain't balanced and it affects the other thing and it affects the other thing and it affects the other thing, and then I have a whole amount of debt over my head that I don't need, you know, and right. that's, being in a position when you have money stress, that's a different level of stress. You can't sleep with, with that kind of stress. And so Absolutely. I said, oh, no, no, no. But Kevin, when it you know, we're taking every segment. So we first dealt with, um, you know, what are the bad habits that we need to curb in order to uh, survive financially. And right. the other thing is, you need to get into the honest overview of what liabilities you have. Um, what are the things you owe? I know this is a very hard topic for most of us. Um, we like to cover our heads and pretend that we don't have liabilities, but mm -hmm. we have to be honest, especially during this time, to, to figure out exactly what we owe. Because guess what? Now we have so much bargaining power, you can go and bargain with your bank to consult. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> because, sorry? No, no, I was talking to myself. I you say banks. Bank is like a, a hate word now. I have a hate word for banks. <laughs> really? Why do you have that hate word for banks? No, I know it's, I know there's some good in it, but I just, no, no, I, I uh, no, no. I, I, I try to take bank out of my, out of my mentality. You know, <laughs> well, don't keep, don't keep the monies under your mattress. <laughs> you know, in some ways, you have to get back to that place almost. <laughs> but no, no, I understand you. Right, but but now is the time. You know, we see the central bank saying um, the commercial banks are to give deferred loans, deferred mortgages. But be very careful with that, Kevin. You want to be careful with deferred mortgages, especially those with accrued interest because they can really hurt you in the long run. Um, mm -hmm. So if you have the chance, sit with your banks and speak with them on consolidating, wrapping all your loans into one structure. Um, if you have an asset, it would be good to have those uh, loans backed by the asset so that your interest rate wouldn't be as high. But now is the time to 
consolidate as much as possible. Um, you know, it's not the time to have multiple loans all around and, and, and short-term debt, especially with high interest rates. You want to try to wrap everything. Use this COVID time. Uh, tell your banks, you know, um, we don't want to do, obviously, it depends on your budget. But we don't want to, if you can afford it, pay your loans. Tell them we want to wrap all of the loans into one structure and, um, and, and call it a day and, and particularly back it by an asset uh, so that you can have one monthly payment, low monthly payment, low interest rate, even if it's stretched out uh, over a long term period. Um, that's OK. You're able to save the amount of monies that that you have to pull out now as we speak. And also, you wouldn't be hit by that uh, accumulated debt once mm -hmm. the, the period, the 60 days or uh, how much ever the bank gives you. So um, yeah. that's, a good, yeah. that's a good thing I would encourage you to do, Kevin, uh, and all your listeners. Um, try to consolidate your loans as much as possible during this time. Uh, as for the listeners, Kevin stayed away from banks. <laughs> Not on that <laughs> level. Yeah, no, sir. Borrow money to make money. You borrow money from banks to get you borrow that money to go make money. That's for business or something like that. Not know uh, But what are some of the what are some creative income generating strategies you think you can share with us that can actually help um, of some of our people in this day and time? Because I, I hear I hear you saying a lot about pay. Pay, pay, but how do you pay, pay, pay when persons are finding challenges with income? Because from this situation, we had a lot of jobs that were um, um, were lost. You know, um, the government is um, in, in this country is getting people to reach out to national insurance for for monies and so forth and everything, and but. How, what are some of the creative strategies? Because for me, I like to focus on what can we create to help sure. with the problem, you know, sure. because, because in all practicality, it's just people have mounting debt, but the fears are so great because they're not sure if their job is going to be open. They're not sure if this is going to continue or if they had some stream of income coming in. Okay, now what do we do? We're, we're, we're in a position, you know, like my grandmother, she was a housekeeper. But when she got home, she used to sell cup and baggy and all kind of stuff and run ASU and do all kind of things. She she had ways of creating money. So I'm saying, what can creative strategies we can help um, people to start to, you know, look towards? Sure. And, and that is, that's a very good question, um, Kevin. You would have um, noticed that. Uh, the first thing, like I said, is to be honest where you stand financially. And that will, that will then determine what wiggle room you have. So if at this point you have lost your job, unfortunately, um, but you, you, you're keeping yourself current and aware of exactly what the government, uh, what subsidies they're, they're providing um, during this time, what stimulus packages, then um, you should have a full-fledged uh, roadmap on all the stimulus packages that are, uh, you know, applicable to you. And you should start taking advantage of those stimulus uh, packages. So, uh, for example, you mentioned NIB. Um, if, if, if you have lost your income, then you should be definitely uh, applying for unemployment benefits, um, you should definitely, at that point, because you don't have the income, take up the deferred um, loans because you can't pay it uh, and you have things to deal with. But coming on to your point on what creative ways we can use to generate more income, um, and that comes to once you would have evaluated where you stand, I don't want to send anybody going, trying to, to generate income without the knowledge of where they stand. You mm -hmm. definitely should start um, creating different ways uh, for income generation, but only after or simultaneously you understanding where you stand financially. 
And you see, the thing about being a child of God and a financial person, sometimes they can go uh, hand in hand and sometimes they're like on the opposite spectrum. As a child of God, I know that all things will work together for my good. Hallelujah. That is what the word says. <laughs> so even though um, if um, I, God forbid, a child of God um, lose their job, then we know that God is working it out for our good. And I can't run away from that. Financially, that may not make sense. But spiritually, which comes even before financial, uh, I know that God is working it out. So that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's the good thing that, that will keep me, um, make me go to sleep at night. Because I know regardless of what COVID bring, brings, God has us. Um, however, he also said that faith without works is dead. And yep. as a result, we then need to put pen to paper and start planning uh, our next business idea. So what, think about all those things that you have, you, you, you thought about, you know, the hundred business ideas you have. Um, the thing about our grandparents, they were so, they were so, uh, smart that they they just ran the business without putting the business plan together however we're in a different era kevin we're we're in a new era where business planning is absolutely key um so during this covid time we should be penning um paper or putting our keys to the pc and formulating our business plan so mm -hmm. that we can then send those business plans into places like the small business development center which was which is a pseudo governmental organization um mm -hmm. i think you can visit there it's accessaccelerators.org or something like that uh google it mm -hmm. i'm sure you'll find it uh, take those business plans and submit to sbdc for funding, or you may already have funding. So the, the, the range of business ideas go from your potential, so that God-given talent you have. I know you're, a, you're an amazing, sorry? No, go ahead, I, I agree with you, go on. You're an amazing musician, Kevin. So what is our talent? My, my talent, you know, I, I'm, I'm a bookworm. That's, that's my talent. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I can't think, I can't do a, a lot of things, but I, I know finances, I know books, I know current affairs, and, and I, I believe that that's what God has given me as my talent. So I'm, I'm developing various areas to, 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 to monetize that talent. And so I would right. encourage your viewers to monetize their God-given talent. Because guess what? When you are working on something that you're passionate about, um, that is not work. That is, that is your passion. Your passion right. should create finances for you, Kevin. And that way you would not feel as if you're working one day in yes. your life. You know? Yeah. So figure out, uh, we're at ground zero. We, this is a new financial beginning. So figure out uh, what your talents are, uh, whether you're a good cookie baker, um, if you are talented in, um, you know, you're, you're cooking right now, Kevin. What are you cooking? I am cooking some conkin rice. I have a nice big whole baked chicken in the oven. And I'm doing potato salad. So... You should say I just I just not a restaurant. <laughs> oh, that is not a bad thing, Kevin. But oh, what, no, what I don't want you to do, Kevin, is wake up tomorrow morning and have your signs out you selling. <laughs> no. That is how no, I, I live in the Caribbean, Kevin. That is how I know. um you know, even big time entrepreneurs. You don't take the time to strategize and plan. Don't take the time to imagine yeah. how much harder we could be. If we were to take a few minutes, a few days to mm -hmm. plan out our ideas, and it's very simple. When we hear business plan, 
we go, oh my goodness, because we yeah. see all these apps online um, where it it, it it takes us years to complete the plan. But it's simple, you know, it, it, there's a five page strategy. And, um, you know, if, 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 if you're interested in getting into that, um, visit my YouTube channel, Felicia Boyle Bazaar, Fees Financials. And um, I'll be on a show on Thursday nights. Your show on Thursday nights. I actually ended my eight weeks. I, I created an eight week uh, course. Course, yeah. Yeah. So it ended last Thursday night, but the content is available on YouTube. Um, so it's it's if you're interested in completing that business plan, go on um, my YouTube channel and review that video. I, I promise you that you will be on your way in no time but definitely take the time whatever you come across during this time that you're interested in starting take the time to plan it out um know who your target market is so if you're if you're selling baggies for example um then and you're targeting all the school children that are passing your your neighborhood then that's your target market um you want to make it you you don't want to only put it in the clear plastic bag that grandma used to use uh but you want to develop your brand for that bag you, you want it so that it, it's beyond your generation you know you don't want it to end with you when you go off the scenes then that ends you're creating legacy you're creating continuity and so that your children and your grandchildren will take that baggy business and it will continue. It'll be Tomlinson's baggy uh, business, whatever, whatever you call it. I like it. that. Tomlinson. I love it. Tom, I see it now. Big boy. Exactly. And neon lights. <laughs> so let's create, let's create legacy. Uh, let's move away from the third world mentality into first world mentality. Let us, move away from being uh, in mental slavery, free ourselves, like our brother Bob said, emancipate ourselves from mental slavery and think like owners, think like occupiers, not like um, just in the daily grind without the future. You know, you said something, you said legacy. You know, a lot of people don't understand that when you start projects, Right. You cannot right. just look at today, your existence. You have to look generationally. Yeah. You have to yeah. look at your children. I think it's in Japan, somewhere where I was reading, where in Japan, in order to really get into a solid business in Japan, you have to present a 400-year business plan. You have to present, they have to see this plan exceeding generations. That's why names like Yamaha and Suzuki and all these things, they're lasting so long. They're outliving generations. So my thing is this, that I'm, um, when people get into stuff, you, you can't just think about today and yourself and buying a nice car and blinging and all that kind of stuff. You know, you have to think about the generations. And that's how my mind is wired. Like when I started my program, um, before I started, and it didn't make no, it didn't make sense to me what I was doing. I was just doing stuff, you know, but as I planned and I found that every every year or every season, I have to keep renewing my plan. Keep renewing. Yes. Keep, yes. So if you look on if you look on my computer, I have like files of renewal <laughs> of plan renewals, you know, where I just keep adjusting, keep and even now in the middle of COVID nineteen, like this was the time I spent some time reorganizing myself, getting myself and looking at things from a different perspective and realizing that um, being home shouldn't stop anything. So then you start, I started creating a lot of stuff and doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. So I understand, you know, I, I am with you. And so, but I think that a lot of people just need to get over that fear of the media. Well, the, the media is really inducing a lot of fear. You turn on the TV every day, COVID-19, 11 there, this happened, this, you know, it's, 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 a, it, it, it's, a, it's a, 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 a dark cloud that if you allow it, it won't allow you to see from the eyes of your imagination, but allow you to be 
suppress based upon the fear that the media is, and the media is making plenty money off of this, you know. Yeah. Plenty money. <laughs> Uh, you know, Kevin, the thing about it, we, we need to keep ourselves abreast of what is going on. Definitely, we cannot live in a bubble because uh, yeah, the media will also help us to see where we can move uh, strategically uh, to, to even increase our finances. Right. But we shouldn't allow the media to cripple us. And exactly. so, once, you know, the news play over and over and over. So once you've got the gist, then get on to your planning. What and, do you say? And, go ahead, go ahead. No, so what I also want to, to advise, Kevin, everyone in your household should understand the budget. Y'all hear that? Sorry, I was talking to nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so not only, um, you know, budgeting is for mommy, but budgeting should be for mommy, daddy, and the children. Obviously, you wouldn't get the children too intricately involved into all the workings, but they should understand that, look, this is our budget for the month. These are all of our expenses for the month. Um, we have a budget for entertainment and what that entertainment section is. This is what we'll go to the theater for, you know, once we're able to get back out. Um, Netflix, fifteen dollars. Netflix, whatever the case is, so they wouldn't come and say, "Well, you know, mommy, can I get?" Uh, my daughter likes to ask for V bucks. Um, this is this new uh, Fortnite game, and oh, yeah. you know, I've been I've been giving her a little because I know it's very strange for her during this time. You know, she's an extremely active child. And to be in the house 24-7, it's, it's really crazy. So I've been giving in to the V-Box. Um, but she still needs to understand, our children still need to understand where we stand financially. And we shouldn't keep it a secret. Um, when we're in the hole, they need to understand that we're working to get out the hole. This is not something that you spread on the streets. Well, we, um, you know, we're in a hole. Tell your friends, but understand right. this is what mommy and daddy are doing, or this is what because we have different uh, types of homes these days. Um, so this is what mommy or this is what daddy is doing to to get us where we need to be. Um, so it's very important that the entire family understands and, and buys into the, the budget and every aspect of the budget um, from assets to liabilities to income and expenses. And, and like I said, you don't need to have millions in the bank account um, to, to have this apply to you. This should apply to every last Bahamian person or resident living here in the Bahamas. We should all be cognizant of where we stand financially. Um, you know, we, we always hear, oh, the credit bureau is coming, the credit bureau is coming. That should not be the, the thing to scare us. The thing to scare us is that another COVID, another COVID light, um, could possibly come, and we need to we need to get ourselves financially situated where we're at the point of having at least six months worth of our expenses and liabilities covered in that six month pool. But um, a lot of us, because of various circumstances, you know, we cannot. People go through so many things. We cannot paint this with one brush to say, oh, you've been mismanaging your money. Oh, you've, you're just a shopaholic. shopaholic. Um, you can't do that because each of our situations is so different. Um, but at this point, we are all in the same boat and we're all facing one giant financial creature. And the creature is sucking each of us financially. So we're, we, regardless of what was, regardless of what, what bad things we did with our, with our spending habits and our budgets, this is the time that I want to encourage every last Bahamian person or resident to take up your pens, take up your keyboards, and start typing understand where you stand and let's create yep. that budget 
And it's a, a budget is not a bad word. Let us let us see list all those things. We're at the kitchen table now, according to Kevin. We're at the kitchen table. So our first kitchen table exercise will be bring all the bills. Let us see what our electricity bill is, our water bill. Um, get into how much food we need to buy on a weekly basis, break it down. Um, you don't need a brain surgery degree to get this done or a financial degree. This is extremely simple because we all do it in some shape or form. I am just advising us to be a little more strategic with it. Um, so plan out all those angles that, that you, you, you have to do, um, all of your expenses. If, if you lost your income, unfortunately lost your source of income, I am so sorry and my heart goes out to you, um, but I encourage you to tap into everything that the government has said. Try to tap into those angles and use the bank to defer your, your item. So like I said, I am not a fan of deferral, but it works if you don't have the income to, to pay the liability. Um, so now is the time for you to, to be strategic though. Lay it down, list everything so that we can then start with the new beginning. But in order for it to be a new beginning, you have to understand where you stand and you have to understand what your bad habits were and what you will do to curb those bad habits. Because, like I said, I am not going to make the shoe fit anymore. I am done, Kevin. I have I've, I've, I've officially done trying to make the shoe fit. I'm going to budget it out and wait. <laughs> oh, the patience, the patience, the patience. But you're right. You're right, though. You're right. And um, um, I think a lot of our people, you know, what they say, that the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. <laughs> Because <laughs> I, I was in the store today, um, um, yesterday, and I had my buy. I knew what I, I knew how much money I wanted to spend the store yesterday. And boy, I saw this chocolate cake, right? I didn't feel like baking nothing. I didn't feel like baking nothing this weekend. I just wanted to, I said, I just get this so I could have it for the weekend. And then two things. I said, Kevin, no. You're disciplining yourself to stay away from all the sweets. Every now and then, fine. But not on a consistent basis. And two, you got to avoid it. Leave it alone. So it's it's a bitter pill to swallow. It but really, it really the, But at the end of the day, it's the vision. It's the goal. It's yeah. the end game. Yeah. It's and that's and I think that's what people um, need to remember. Like these temporary desire. Like I look at it like this: if I go and buy Kentucky at twelve o'clock, and I finish with that, my hunger is going to kick in again. At four o'clock, <laughs> and I want to need something else. But if I cook something home, I can actually have whatever I had at twelve. I can have some more left over, and you know, and eat it then. Yeah. And so, yeah. it's about being practical. My grandmother was like that, man. And I don't know where I had gotten into that whole um, modern uh, way of living, where you just stop somewhere because it's easy to do that. It really Especially is. People like me who want to run a lot, it's easy to just stop somewhere. It, it was. It was easier to just stop somewhere and just, you know, whatever. But I'm glad I saw the light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, but so but Kevin, I don't want to be one of those financial people who say, do it. This is how it should be done because I'm also human. I understand right. the struggles. This is a really hard thing to do and especially a hard thing to do when you're facing financial difficulties um, yeah. but it can be done as long as we develop that discipline to say you know what I'm going to only treat myself on a monthly basis um, one it's going to be good for my budget and two it's going to be good for my size and all those things um, your entire fitness. Um, so that is, we really just need to to, to self discipline, and that is that is the key all around. But in addition to that, Kevin, we need to start thinking about ways to reduce our expenses. 
you know, we're going through the entire budget situation. So what are the things that we can use to uh, decrease our expenses? And and one of the things pay that I'd like to include Pay a light bill off every month. Sorry. Pay a light bill off every month. Those utilities. Well, that is split. But in addition they to with, paying off yeah. the utilities, um, I want if you can set aside uh, the phased approach to go green. Um, in terms of how to every appliance that you buy, ensure that it's uh, energy efficient. So any, say for example, your microwave went down or your washer went down. Um, when you're going to replace it, don't replace it. Ensure you look at the energy efficiency side of things. Try to convert one uh, AC unit to solar uh, at a time. Phase in the solar approach. See how the entire plan, get a quote for your entire house, but then ask the, the supplier how you can start with one panel, two panels, three panels, and go until you're totally off the grid. I, I laugh because I pass one area one day, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> and I'm, um, this fellow had of his house a regular glass <laughs> and like like a solar panel. <laughs> and I had to stop and I had to ask him. I said, "Does this work?" He said, "I've been trying, but I've been trying. I've been trying to do this." <laughs> it was just so funny how the gadget was set up, you know. But oh, um, it works. No, <laughs> no, but he, but he was willing to try. <laughs> Well, you know, more power to him. Um, the other thing, the other tip I want to leave, um, Kevin, is uh, let us get into our kitchen gardens, you know? Yeah, I wish I try could grow to, stuff. Yeah, try to grow a little rosemary and thyme and, and um, what, onions and whatever else, sweet peppers. See what you can do. Try to try to okay. grow some stuff. For me for me personally, I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't got patience for that kind of stuff. I, I'm gonna try it because at my school, in the yard there, we have a lot of property. And so I allocated an area where I'm going to go into some um, planting some stuff there. But buddy, <laughs> that, that requires some patience. I'm, you know, I have the, that, that's my biggest challenge right there, patience, because I'm always on to the next, always moving, always, you know, yeah. um, I get bored very easily. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, but, so I got to work you know, on that. I, I'm from a farming background, and I totally dislike farming. But, it, you know, some things you just have to do because you have to do it, right? It will do well um, for my health, and it will also do well on my budget. So that's why now, it I would support, not I support people with farms now because, like, if you see here, these tomatoes and stuff that I have, these came from, well, my priest at my church, um, Father Earl Hepburn, uh, right. told me he, he does some personal, you know, and I, I tasted tomatoes one time and I said, listen, when you get another harvest, call me. And he did. Um, but then other things, like I'm finding that people, there's a guy who here in Freeport, um, uh, when I get his information, I'll post it online. But sure. he has sure. some wonderful stuff that, I mean, you know, so I said, you know what? I'm going to avoid buying greens from the public, and I've been going to the uh, with the, the local farmer's market in Freeport farmers as well. Market. Right. And I found that, like, these tomatoes are more real, you know? A bunch yeah. of seeds. I like it, you know? And I felt different eating. Uh, you feel the potency in the, you know, you can taste it, I should say, in, in, well, the, in the farm. Again, Kevin, you have, to, you have to know what works for you, and you also have to do the the quick cost benefit analysis because sometimes you know you you may the time you take in your kitchen garden versus supporting cousin mary's um farm uh you may get the same bang for your buck uh so you, you just have to look at all aspects but the key is making sure that you look because if we sit down and just wish it's not going to just go away um, right. We're not. We're, our budgets are not going to help themselves. The budget looks for us to help our own budget, not the other way around. And so this is the point. The okay. That's the point. That's the point you made just now. Um, we have to support one another. 
all right? Like, I know it's easy to run to the big uh, conglomerates or whatever, but look at persons in the community who are, who are selling stuff, you know? Um, support them because you're helping each other. And, and then when you create your own stuff, people support you. That's how it works. True, Kevin, but just one point there in Go that on. we, as the small men, as the small SMEs, uh, small, medium-sized enterprises, we need to step our game up as well because I agree. I agree. usually people gravitate towards the larger entities because of customer service, good customer service, because of um, pricing, um, because of accessibility. Um, but that doesn't mean that the small uh, enterprises don't have that ability to, to, to generate better customer service, proper um, pricing, et cetera. But we have to take the time as entrepreneurs, we have to take the time to, to, to lift our game up and use this COVID time to rebrand our business, realign our business, collaborate, um, recalibrate and, and, and put our businesses on the right footing because we cannot sit and say, oh, the, the population not supporting us if we're not at our A game. At the end of the day, we will get what we put out. So I'm encouraging if you're a small business, lift your game. Call me up. Make it more uh, personable. So Felicia, hey, you know, I just harvested my tomatoes. Um, I priced them at this. Do you want me to deliver them for you? Um, you know, find creative ways to touch your target market and not just sit and say, oh, we should support, we should buy Bahamian, we should buy, we need to make sure that our game is so high that it encourages the target market to support us. Right. One point there, I want to stick a pin. Sure. I think it's important for us to understand that we by ourselves can't do everything. See, this is where, this is where, this is how it works. If you have the product, but somebody else may have a good packaging scheme and somebody else may have a good distribution scheme. Not because you have the product means you need to package and distribute. It may mean that you may need to now partner with people to make things happen. If you look at what we're doing right now online, um, you and I are talking, you're in um, New Providence, but behind the scenes there's Rudina Miller who is producing the entire show. And she is in Nassau, and she. So, why would I take the stress on myself to go and try be the producer, <laughs> and then be the only person talking on the show? And then you know, like it's too much. We have to learn how to integrate, how to um, um, learn network. to network with each other. And but, I, I but think that's see, that part. is how that is how we've been trained from donkey ages you know we've been trained to get it done ourselves and not um you know collaborate but well, this is a new beginning this is a new era where we need to form it's a we, need to merge. we need to merge we need to amalgamate to to, to you know find that middleman and, and and link them because like you said like you rightly said the cost benefit of of doing producing and and um, going out of your lane is so high. The, the the cost is so high that that you are shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah, and you're killing, you're burning energies where you could be saving energy to use yes. the energy for your area of expertise, and that is something that I had to learn, you know, a, a lot because um, and I had to see it from you know the light of being a producer. If you're producing a show, you're not the talent. You find talents and you make things happen. In fact, when I had my choirs and when I work with like with the grandmom youth choir, I am the only person in the choir who can't sing. <laughs> I don't sing. But what I do is I find singers and I'm able to create the vision and put it together and give direction and work with the voices and so forth to give it, you know, what it needs to give it that boost. 
So that is the same concept with business. And I think that is something that we need to sell more in our community, teaching people how to make lemonade per se. Yeah. How to, if, if you have lime and somebody has water, um, um, access to water and somebody has the sugar and then somebody has the cups to put it in, then the four of you get together and you sell lemonade. I had a camp, my summer camp one year, and that was our theme. And that theme was there to help um, children understand how, how is, uh, you know, what it's like working together. And, exactly. if you, and if you sell a lemonade for a dollar, everybody gets a quarter. You know? Yes. So, but but let's, let's, let's expand on the, I know we only have five more minutes, but let's expand on the lemonade. Um, you're, you're absolutely right. So the farmer who is producing the lime, uh, uh -huh. we have Auntie uh, Ellie's sugar uh, convenience store. So to get the sugar. Then we uh -huh. have the other, um, the other, you know, little trinkets that we want to put uh, add to the lemonade. Um, we have Tomlinson's uh, graphic design, and then we have Felicia's uh, business solution strategy. All of that we should come together. We don't, we don't necessarily need to be in one firm but we need to form uh, associations and networks so that at the end of the day when we put out that lemonade the the tomlinson lemonade or whatever we choose to name the lemonade right. it is so high quality um mm -hmm. the packaging is right the we know the target market because um we had ebs shameless plug uh, to, to, to understand what your business business uh, plan is and so we know where we're going we know the price that we're going to do because the research took place and mm -hmm. at the end of the day we know we're using um, Betty's shipping or um, John's right. shipping or whomever right. shipping to get it to the market that we so desired and right. that is the only way we're going to step out of this third world mentality and into first world if we utilize each other and 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 um, form synergies in order to get there. And, and that's my strong belief. And especially during this COVID time, we need to form those partnerships. And to add to that, that is a mentality that we have now through the entire Caribbean. Because right yeah. now, if there's one lesson to be learned during this whole thing, and that is we have to now really and truly hold hands with our brothers and sisters in the Caribbean. We have been in the Bahamas, we've been so focused north that we weren't looking at what our brothers and sisters were doing. But if we could unite together and we can exchange together properly, we can actually develop a currency and develop a movement um, financially that is going to help to sustain us through all of this, this new norm, I should say. Well, listen, time is gone. But Felicia, I want to thank you so much. I mean, for the day, we have to do this again. Um, I, I, I want you to tell people, okay, what are your show plans now? Since you finished one course uh, on Thursday, what are you now going to be doing? Right. So I am going to be doing similar to this now that, you know, I'm going to team up with other uh, entrepreneurs and other yeah. show producers and um, get on there to get the word out because my goal is that, you know, to have each and every last resident and citizen understand where they stand financially and, uh -huh. and negotiate with banks to get that the best deal possible so that once the economy is back up, we'll have lots of cash flow uh, to get the economy flowing and, and, and not head into depression. Right. I think we're moving into the creative economy. We're moving yeah. into the creative economy. And this is the economy where people get a chance to actually now, like you said in the beginning, actually own. That's why my slogan for creative thinkers is, if you could see it, if you are willing to um, um, believe it, and if you're willing to work it, you can own it. And that's the whole Absolutely. idea. You can own it. So I want to thank you so much for being on this live feed with me. I you're really welcome. appreciate it. Your wealth of knowledge and well, I couldn't even list all the things that you, you know, all of your um, credentials, but hey, you. um, you're awesome. And I'd like to say a special thank you to Rodina Miller, who is producing behind the scenes. 
who she's has awesome. also, she's awesome and she's done uh, my flyers and everything that you see. So Felicia, this is somebody that you can link up with as well. Send me and your contact, she, please. Oh, that's that's simple. I'm posted on Facebook, and so Redina is making a name for herself. Thanks to Shanae Strawn here in Grand Bahama, who assisted us as well with the technology and everything. So listen, I'm going to be going to be back next week, and I'm going to talk again. I'm continuing on the same trend with I don't know if Felicia is available for next week. We'll talk about that afterwards. But we're going to be continuing on the same trend, and I want to spend about four weeks on this. Because, see, the law of repetition, hearing things over and over. Sometimes when people hear things one time, it lose, they lose it. But if you hear it over and over, it's going to build your faith and build your courage to step out and to do something about it. All right? So thank you all, everybody. Thank you. Take thank care. Thank you and have a wonderful